What is up guys and welcome to the channel. This is going to be part five of the how to steer Bronco steering series and in this video we're going to be delving in to my 2.0 Bronco Buster rack that came out of my personal Bronco. Now this rack has 38,000 miles to the dot on it. In fact the odometer when I pulled it said 38,021 miles I believe. I have to go back and check the footage. But anyway this rack has been to Moab twice. It started its life on 35 inch tires. It then went to a keen suspension lift with 37s where it spent about 10, maybe 15,000 miles on that setup as well. It's been to the Rubicon, it's been snow wheeling, it's been jumped at 75 miles an hour. It's been in a high speed accident. It's been in multiple different scenarios where I really pushed it hard to what might be its limits. And I eventually swapped it out for the 3.0 rack. And real quick guys, before we get too deep into this video, if you haven't checked out the other four parts to this How to Steer series, highly recommend you check them out. We go over 3.0, 74 weld, the Bronc Buster, 2.0s. We go over a lot of broken racks. We show you a lot of nuts and bolts of why and how and where and when and, and all that good stuff. We go really deep into a lot of stuff. So if some of this seems a little bit unfamiliar to you, this isn't gonna be as deep a dive into why you need to modify. This is just going to be showing you the aftermath of my Bronco steering rack. So if you want to know more about the why, go check out those videos, especially, especially part three and four. Those go pretty deep into some pretty good details, so check those out. Okay, now that we got that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk a little bit about this rack before we go into the teardown. Now we're going to be tearing down my 2.0 rack. Like I said, it's been through a lot of crap. I wheeled it pretty darn hard. And I ended up upgrading to the 3.0 only for science, only to test, only to try new stuff, not because this rack wasn't working. In fact, when I pulled it, this rack wasn't giving me any issues whatsoever. So that's why I was a little surprised when I saw what I saw when I pulled it off the Bronco. Now, before we show you what I found and before we start to tear apart this rack in its entirety, to see what else we might find, I have to do a disclaimer, guys, because I know people will latch on to this certain part of the video we're about to get into, and they're gonna be like, ha, I, show, I knew it, I told you. You know, that kind of stuff. The comment section, whatever it might be. But this is the truth, this is the fact pattern about, about what happened. So, a while ago, when I was making my Bronco suspension review video, we were whipping around the off-road track at the local off-road park that we have. I was getting a little spirited into the moment, and as you see from this internal clip, if I can find it, I don't have anything outside the Bronco, but I do have something filmed inside the Bronco. I was taking a corner at about 40 miles an hour, approximately 40 miles an hour. As I was taking that corner, I turned hard passenger, almost full lock. The Bronco understeered, because I'm still new to this uh, off-road high-speed stuff. The Bronco understeered my fault entirely, and I went off the track into a dirt berm that was almost just a little bit past my waist height. Obviously, way too high for the Bronco and way too steep. It was about yay steep. The Bronco hit hard, ended up causing $3,000 in damage. My intercooler was smashed, my bumper was smashed, my hidden winch mount was sheared. It pushed the winch up into my intercooler, it bit my frame horns, but most important part, my steering was almost full locked passenger. And when I hit, it pushed the tires hard all the way passenger. And when it did that, I thought for sure I had broken something in the steering, but it still drove fine. The alignment was way off. Like I've never seen alignment that bad. I thought something was messed up, but after an alignment, it drove straight, it drove fine. And I continued on my merry way. I replaced the parts that were broken on the body and the, the bumper and the winch. And I kept trekking and I kept making a lot of videos, as you can see from my YouTube channel, since that video came out. I didn't think anything was wrong. Well, come to find out, when I was taking apart the setup, I realized I did something nobody else has done publicly. That's right, guys. I broke my Bronc Buster driver bushing. That's right. The bushing... Uh, I broke it. 
And I've never seen anyone else publicly talk about breaking their bushing. Now, it might not be the first. In fact, I think I know someone else that may have done it. Um, I've heard of people that claim to have done it, but nobody has actually shown proof, pictures, or anything like that. This is the first publicly posted broken Bronk Buster bushing. So how did it break? Well, that's a good question. If you look at the bushing, and I'll show you in a second, or I might show you now in this clip, when I hit the berm, my tires were turned, it forced it hard to force the tires to turn hard, which would have pushed the rack, the steering screw in the rack all the way to the passenger side really quickly. And I believe it overextended the screw past the point of where it's supposed to go past the steering stops. And you'll see a nice fat imprint of my tie rod nut into the Delrin bushing. Nice fat imprint right into it and the bushing cracked. Now, interesting to say, it still drove fine. And I think, more than anything, the Pronk Buster bushing saved my steering rack from what would otherwise have obviously been a complete failure of the rack and a very costly repair. Still drove fine. I continued to drive it through the Rubicon 37th lifted. I hit jumps at 75 miles an hour after that accident. Whoops, everything you could think of. I went to Moab after that. Sorry, no, Moab was before that. I went to SoCal after that. No issues. So, if anything, I credit Bronk Buster's bushing for saving my rack and for allowing me to continue to drive. So, now that I got that out of the way, guys, we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you what's going on and uh, some other things about this rack that I noticed when I pulled it out of the Bronco. All right, well, we're gonna start by taking off the Bronk Buster housing, because that's the most accessible. And we'll see how the housing is doing after 15,000-ish miles. All right, hopefully this is focusing. But initial inspection looks good. Let's check it out some more. Not really seeing anything. There's some grease marks, but I mean, supposed to have grease in it so that's not an issue let's wipe this clean real quick and see if there's any wear on that carbon steel all right let's see what we got I'd say that it's looking good. I can't find anything at all. I don't see any wear markings, anything whatsoever. This thing is still essentially brand new. After 15,000 miles through the Rubicon, lifted, 37s, taking quick, crazy jumps. This is even in a high speed impact and it's fine. All right, so I grabbed a fresh towel. We're going to do a quick wipe down of the screw. Nothing. Nothing at all. Now I'll show you the screw, the belt, all that. Everything's looking good. Not seeing anywhere, any metal. Even the belt looks fine still. Belt has 38,000 miles on it. So I'm gonna say passenger side is A-OK. -okay. All right, now what we're doing is we are removing the motor, or at least we're gonna try to. Bingo. And we're gonna look at 
the teeth. Honestly, the teeth look just fine. So we'll take this rag, wipe down. No issues with the teeth. Okay, moving on. But you want to look at this. You want to see if there's any play in the shaft bearing, which there isn't. Spin it, listen for any noise, which there isn't. So no metal, no play, and no noise. This motor is just fine. Now let's look at our belt here, which I was able to get off. Let's check it for any wear. So I'll flip it upside down or inside out. You can tell it's not brand new if that makes any sense, but I'm not seeing any wear whatsoever. It looks like it has plenty of life left in it. So, belt, just fine. Then we got this tensioner. Tensioner is fine, no noise. And then we got the pulley right here which is what brings the screw in and out. Now, this is what I don't have the tools to remove right now. So we'll dive into this later once I get that tool. I just ordered it. It's like a e-torx. I don't have an e-torx. Okay, obviously this is the area of concern right here. This shaft, if you look at previous video, a clip, which I'll show right now, you're seeing that there's a lot of metal coming off of it. This is the driver's side. And I don't know if it shows very well in the video, but we'll see. This is after I've already cleaned it. I'm getting some tiny chunks of stuff. Again, ignore the mud. That is from me not clamping the die rod down properly, but there's some tiny chunks of stuff. I see some metal. It's not going to show up on camera because it's super fine. This amount of metal isn't something I'm particularly concerned about. I'm mainly just curious where it's coming from. Because I cleaned my rack pretty thoroughly when I installed this bushing. And there wasn't any metal there to begin with. Well guys, I kind of gave up trying to get this pulley bracket out gently because the nuts, bolt stripped, whatever. I tried everything, trust me. You're gonna write the suggestions down in the comments. I tried it off camera. This is like this is like four weeks later now, okay? I've tried it many times. Finally broke out the hammer, the grinder, and a screwdriver. And we're really going to down in this thing. Let me show you what the pulley looks like, truly dissected. So this is the pulley. It's made up of plastic on the outside, right? This is a very, very tough, brittle, hard plastic. It cracks easy. I mean, you can call it easy. I guess I whacked it with the sledgehammer, but it ain't wearing out. Like this stuff is really good. So if you're worried about this plastic pulley wearing out from that rubber belt, it's not wearing out. It's really hard. And look at the construction. It's fancy. But underneath that, plastic pulley I discovered something it's got this metal gearing right here this is all metal there's this metal gearing and there's a metal collar underneath the plastic and it's kind of dimpled together to hold it in place and there's like oil in there very interesting concept so I can't grind that I tried already with this this big old boy and it is not going I hit it hard for a while and you'll see where I was hitting it, it barely, barely made a dent. That's gonna take too long to get that sucker out. So let's see what we can do. I already hit and it kind of damaged the lip on that collar. So I'm hoping and it's working that I can just pop that sucker off. Hmm. 
more of the collar, greasy. So you see right there, if it's focusing, it's got this weird like, plastic thing right here. And underneath that is all these balls for the ball bearing. And it's got this grease collar coming around here, going into this dimple, and then coming out onto the steering rack. Yeah, see all the balls underneath there? Right, let's pull back this plastic snake. See all the balls coming out? So we got these, these metal balls falling out right here. It's weird, they like, hopefully you can see this. But there's a channel and they go in, and this is where they actually come out, pick up their grease and then they go back down. It's very weird design. I'm not familiar with it. All right, so we're getting very close. It's wiggling now. I just keep grinding at it, hitting it with the hammer, trying to break it loose, and I'm so close to doing that. Oh my gosh, guys, I did it. It's unscrewing. It's happening. Four weeks. Wow. All right, so I just learned a lot about how this steering rack works, and I'm going to show you guys. If you're like sciencey nerdy like me, you're going to like this. This is the manual input side, okay? So power, uh, all steering in vehicles has to have a manual connection. Your steering wheel connects to the shaft, which connects to that pinion, which is on that steering screw, which is turning it back and forth, right? But it's hard to turn big tires, especially on pavement, with just manual, you know, oomph. So they have power steering, which is on this side. What that is, in this case, is an electric motor that's connected right here. And it's sensing, from this sensor, your steering inputs. And it does fancy, nerdy stuff to calculate how much to turn that motor to assist you with your steering, which is doing most of the work. When you're turning that motor, it's connected to this belt on this pulley system. And this belt is turning. When this belt is turning, okay, your plastic collar that was on this metal collar that was hooked in by these grooves and such and attached by three bolts, that very hard plastic collar has these grooves in it that's turning with the belt. As the belt's turning, it's rotating the metal collar underneath. In this metal collar, there's this plastic sleeve that came it was right there in this groove, which is angled with the steering screw. In that groove, it's filled with all these little metal balls. Okay? Think about that for a second. And then as this is turning from the belt, those metal balls, which are, are forcing themselves in between the metal collar and the grooves on the steering shaft. Okay? And as they get forced into the grooves, because the collar has it angled, the balls are being forced in a direction. And it's the actual steel balls themselves going in between the collar and the steering shaft in these grooves that are pushing and pulling and assisting with your steering. That's pretty crazy that all that steering force is coming down to these tiny little metal balls, which are very hard to pick up, these tiny little metal balls pushing and pulling your steering rack. And those are steel, these are steel, those aren't wearing out anytime soon. This is a very, very hard steel. I don't see that wearing out anytime soon. It has a lubricating channel providing lubrication constantly. That's good. And uh, I'd say, and the, the plastic collar itself is very, very hard. I don't see that wearing out at all either from your belt. I'd say the wear part on this is definitely the belt. But even this belt at 40,000 miles or 38,000 miles, doesn't show any signs of wear. So that's actually pretty reassuring and pretty stout design. Another thing I wanna talk about, guys, is all those steel balls in this collar are gonna be your bearing, okay? Because now that they're out, now that the balls all fell out, the shaft 
wiggles up and down significantly, okay? And it's no longer centered in there. So make sure, well, the other thing I want to touch on too is that bearing right there that's sealed with that snap ring, that's locating this collar, which is in turn locating this steering shaft. It's a great design, it works pretty well, but it shows you why you need to keep your tie rod boots sealed because the second your tie rod boots are unsealed, your yucky muck is going to be coming in here with the steering shaft or screw, whatever you want to call it, and it's going to get pulled into here, mixed with all the steel ball bearings. It's going to go through all these grooves, come in through all here, and get down here into the main bearing as well, and it's going to muck everything up. So that's why you have to keep your boots sealed and double check them often to make sure they stay sealed because everything coming in here, no good. Okay, I got the snap ring out. It was a tough piece of cake to get out. It uh, broke my snap on pick, which sucks. That sucker's expensive. But I was able to finally get it out, worked its way out, pulled out. Now behind this snap ring, which is very strong, you're going to have this retainer piece that's in here as well that you're going to have to work loose around the bearing. So we're going to do that. We're going to work this retainer out, slide it out, and then this whole assembly should pull out. So this is not a how to take it apart, guys. Well, there we have that retaining ring. It's got that groove in it. So this was over the bearing with this. This is over the bearing with this in front of it, holding it in place. Theoretically, yep, that pulls right out. We have a seal here and a seal behind it. So a double seal on this bearing surface. Take a look at that sucker now. Okay, here's my super clean workspace. Uh, this is that bearing I was telling you about. See how it's got the grooves in it? Those balls, these bearing balls were in there, coming through here, rotating through that channel into these. And as it turned, those balls were catching hold of the shaft on these grooves and assisting as it pulled it back and forth. And that's how that worked. And then it's held in place, rotating on its own bearing on the shaft and then its own internal bearing to the wall as well right here on this fixed part. This is a a bearing and uh, 8UM CWT made in China. But it feels like a pretty freaking tight bearing. There's no play. This one is doing extremely well for 38,000 miles or whatever it was. Yeah, this bearing is completely good. And it's got these two seals one on either side, and the seals are just fine, no damage. Next, we're gonna take our 15 Torx Plus thing, and we're gonna start unscrewing on this driver's side with the electrical control box. Okay, while I'm waiting for the parts to take off that pinion gear, I wanna show you something I just found out. Now. Remember, the, remember at the beginning of the video I talked about the the nut that came from the tie rod and it overextended on the impact I had and went into my bushing and popped my bushing and broke it, but I didn't even realize it. Well, I just realized too that the snap ring in there, the ears on it got cracked off from the impact as well. There's no ears on the snap ring. So I saw that. I found that pretty interesting. It's going to be hard to tell, but yeah, both ears got snapped off on that snap ring holding that bushing in place. And like I said, guys, this thing took a heavy impact and I'm not finding any damage. In fact, everything is still working well. And the, aside from some muck that was on that side that was getting into the gears a little bit, there's been nothing on this rack that has compromised it. Even though the bushing's cracked and the snap ring ears are broken off, everything is still working. Pretty impressive, 18,000 miles on the rack in this condition. So I picked up this nut from Ace Hardware. It's one and an eighth diameter. It's supposed to be an inch in diameter. It was the wrong bin, I guess. But I ground it down, tapped it in with the hammer, and I'm using it to turn this valve 
taken a while, but hopefully eventually this valve will pull out and I'll be able to get the pinion out. Okay, so I was able to get it out with this nut. Pulls out. It's got an O-ring on it. The O-ring has dirt on it, which is a little surprising, but um, otherwise seems clean on the inside, which is the important part, right? And then inside there, we've got a bearing right there. There's a there's ball bearings. I'm assuming that's because, yep, that's the shaft right there turning. And we're going to remove that nut, which I think is a 15 millimeter. This is great. Okay. 15 millimeter. I don't know where to go from here, so stay tuned. Okay, so theoretically now at this point, once we've gotten that back end out, we've removed these screws, this should just pull out. Now, I should mention, this is not a how-to to take your part, rack apart to fix it because I am destroying this rack as I take it apart. Comes right out this shit. Just pull this in. I'm just gonna destroy it. There we go. Look at that and all its goopy goodness. There's a lot of mud in there. A lot of mud. That's why you gotta make sure your boots are sealed, guys. Plastic gears has some gunk in them, but don't look too bad. It doesn't look bad, honestly. Not bad at all. There's just mud in there. But there's nothing wrong with the metal. Now, obviously, these plastic gears right here, this is what's going off of that. Uh, so these, these plastic gears right here, these wheels, these are turning off of this sucker right here which is sensing your steering, which is sending that signal over to your power assist side, which we talked about earlier. So, yep, good times. So in here, we have a bearing right here, very small, like a needle bearing, and it, it feels crusty, like it's got some gunk in it, but otherwise it's doing fine. And then inside that shaft, we have another ball bearing further down at the end, which you already saw. That will be right here at the other end. So this pinion, worm gear, whatever you want to call it, is supported on both sides by bearings. We'll clean this up in a second and see if there's any metal worn, worn out on it. Muck. It should not be that color or that consistency. We're gonna clean this up. Power of editing will bring us back to the finished result. So looking very closely, there's no metal shavings. Everything is fine. This is very strong metal and I'm not seeing anything wrong with this gear whatsoever. Everything's intact. There is some heat discoloration at the end, very minor. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera little blue that's it it's my kid in the background I'm on dad duty right now okay now we're gonna pull out the rack hopefully it comes out I don't know if anything else holding it in maybe it only goes out one way okay so this is the empty housing. I got the steering screw out. I just had to take a hammer and tap it through. And let's look at the bushing real quick. Ignore all the scratch marks on the side, that's for me. 
but if you see the bushing you see the imprint of the tie rod and then in there it's hard to see but there's a crack going the entire width or length or breadth or whatever you want to call it, diameter of that bushing almost just about a centimeter below the surface right right there yeah right there you can see that crack hopefully right there that goes inside of it and it's pretty big um, but it doesn't affect how the bush bushing is working which is pretty cool you see right there too I imprinted it pretty hard but yeah so the housing itself is fine and uh, some of the parts have signs of minor wear but the only true damage I've seen on this rack is the bushing and it was still doing its job so if you're wondering is the Bronco steering rack the 2.0 with the Bronc Buster bushing is that capable of you know lasting a long time this bushing has about 30,000 miles on it I put it on pretty early in the Bronco's life and it has that high impact around 30 40 miles an hour where the tie rod just smacked into it really freaking hard and imprinted itself cracked the bushing and this steering rack trundled on for about 18,000 miles after that event with multiple trips on some heavy duty trails Moab Rubicon etc and it's still trucking just fine obviously I've now destroyed this rack so it's done done but um, Maybe they'll still give me my core charge. Maybe. I'll have to ask. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, you want to see the uh, steering screw real quick? Let me show you that. So here's the steering screw. And there's, there's really no wear on this thing whatsoever. You will see muck. This is where that worm gear was. A lot of muck. But no wear. And um, there is some light rust pitting right here on the center of the shaft that's just from a fault of the boot the tie rod boot where moisture was getting into my rack and allowing all this gunk to come in but thankfully i got a handle on it quickly put in the Haas 3.0 rack check out that video on the Haas 3.0 i've got a couple of videos on that with the 74 weld solution and the bronc buster solution guys and yeah, that's it. Uh, cool your ash, pack your trash. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. It's probably a long video. I apologize. Hopefully it kind of opens your eyes to how the Bronco steering rack is on the interior from just a layman's perspective. And anything you have additional to add, put in the comments. See you on the trails, guys.